Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Play It Right TV. I'm Diane Castillejo. Thank you so much for watching all our episodes. We hope that you've been enjoying talking to the greatest in sports about the latest happenings in the sports world. Please like, share, and subscribe our channel if you haven't yet. And in this episode, very, very, very excited to be talking to world-class team, our women's national football team, who is all the way in Chile preparing for the World Cup. Let's welcome, starting with Coach Alan Stajic. Hello, Coach. Thanks good morning. How are you? Or oh, it's morning over here. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. So excited to chat with you. And of course, we have Tane Anis and Hello. Sir Holden. Hello. Hello. All right. So my first question, how is everybody doing in Chile? What are your initial thoughts on being there? Wow, that's all the way on the other side of the world. Coach? Yeah, it's a long way. We were just talking um, off screen uh, what a long way it is to come for all of us. We have many players in Europe and, and quite a few in the Asia, Asia zone, time zones as well. So just getting over the over the jet lag and the time zone change is, is always a little bit of a challenge and, and we're in that phase right now. But we're really excited to be here and play against, you know, a team, a South American team where, where football's a passion and a religion and, and coming up against a team that's has been in the last couple of World Cups. So it'll be a, a really good test for us. Yeah, so Serena, is this your first time in Chile and um, how do you like it so far? It's been good so far. I've only been here a few days, but yes, it's my first time. And um, I'm also really excited to, you know, play the Chile national team and, you know, see, see what we can do. So just excited and happy to be here. Um, how do you like it so far in Chile? And how's the training going? Um, it's been good so far. Um, the weather's been pretty perfect. Uh, great football weather. And... Um, Trainings have been going well so far. We um, have everyone, uh, we're complete now. So um, excited for uh, tomorrow will be game day minus two. And I know everyone's really excited uh, to play again and be back on the pitch. Yeah, so you're playing Chile on November 12 and 15. Um, well, they're ranked 38 in the world. And But before we get into that, I saw how happy you guys were to reconnect. How was that? meeting everyone from who are coming from all parts of the world, Serena? It's always really nice to be back with the team. Um, yeah, that video kind of showed us like hugging and everything. Um, I feel like this team is very much like a family and every time we come back, it's very welcoming and it's just very nice to see everyone and um, just a great environment to be in. So I was really happy to see everyone and, um, you know, being in Japan, um, I'm the only foreigner, so it's just nice to be with familiar people and um, people that work hard and all that good stuff. So it's nice, nice to be back. Yeah. So, Coach, um, you, um, you, I know you've just arrived like a couple of days, and having you have 23 players there playing against um, Chile, who hasn't qualified yet for the World Cup. They're still aiming to qualify. Um, what are your thoughts and goals? Uh, playing against uh, the national team of Chile and what have you been working on so far with the girls? Yeah, look, we've only been here a, a couple of days. So um, getting over this, it's a really big time zone change. It's probably the biggest one we'll have to deal with. Um, for the majority of players, it's anywhere from an eight to 12 hour time zone change. So it really is, it really is a massive factor trying to overcome. Um, but in terms of playing against Chile, I've been watching them play for the last six or seven years and they're, and they're a team that's really matured and grown over that period. Uh, six or seven years ago, they weren't really a great side, but since then they've been to a couple of World Cups. Uh, they haven't qualified yet, but they're in the World Cup playoff and, and they're in the South American zone, as we know, which is, you know, which is one of the hotbeds of football around the world. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a really good challenge for us. Uh, first time. In South America, I believe, for a Filipino team. So, you know, we're breaking new ground again, and hopefully we can break new ground with some good performances as well. So I know how difficult it is to be in the South America time zone, as you have talked about, and your girls have come from all over the world. So, uh, Tane, uh, can you describe how, what you guys have been doing in practice a little bit, first of all, and 
I guess you've been doing just, I mean, how intense has it been or not really because you're just still trying to break into the time zone of Chile? Um, I think we've kind of been gradually getting into things. Um, you know, everyone also comes in at different times. So uh, myself, I've been here, I think, four days now, three or four days. So um, I've had a little bit more time to adjust. Um, and so, you know, we're kind of just getting the travel out of our bodies and trying to get acclimated as quickly as possible, um, you know, by not overloading and just kind of managing everyone's uh, workload, each training. Um, but obviously, working on the things that uh, we want to achieve while we're here um, with, uh, within the two weeks of our camp. Yeah. So, Coach, you have 23 players. Um, can you tell us how is everybody um, health-wise, uh, fitness-wise, injury-wise? Yeah, we've, we've had a couple of little knocks and niggles coming in. That's always... Uh, always a challenge when there's that many players that are involved. So we try and only bring in the fit players. So there's definitely a couple of players who were left out due to injury. Um, so we're hoping that they recover and rehab um, back in their home hometowns, wherever they're playing at the moment. Um, so, yeah, there's always a couple of little knocks and niggles and, and then overcoming all those other factors that we spoke about. That's the challenge of a football team and they're the challenges that we've We've overcome throughout this year and no doubt we will again but um look everyone the majority of players are, are fit and healthy and, and really looking forward to the challenge yeah okay so now i'm gonna switch to um the world cup draw which was just held very recently and i'll get your react each of your reactions okay so serena let's get your thoughts on the world cup draw you're playing switzerland july 21st new zealand ranked 22nd um, you're playing them on the 25th, and then your last game is against Powerhouse Norway, ranked 12th in the world. Just your overall reaction when you when you saw the draw for the World Cup. Yeah, just kind of just made everything real um, when I was watching it. I was actually watching it um, on the bus with my, my Japanese team because I just finished a, a match, and I was just kind of scrambling to, you know, be able to watch it. Um, I don't have the best connection and all that stuff, but my teammates helped me and it was really cool. And just to be able to witness that in real time and my first time. So I think it was just definitely like an excitement, even like oddly, like a nervousness of like, oh my gosh, like who are we going to play? Um, but ultimately, like it didn't matter who we were going to play because, um, you know, everyone is ranked higher than us and it's, it's going to be a dogfight no matter what. But overall, I was just really excited and just happy to be a part of the conversation and just watch the wonder of it all um, but there was a lot of different emotions for me personally while I was watching it um, on my phone just you know yeah. getting to experience it. <laughs> Tane your thoughts first of all to be in the World Cup draw is, is already incredible so what what were you feeling when you saw who you were picked to be within group A? Uh, I think it was just so much excitement um, to see, you know, our name be on the screen and, and pulled out of one of the, you know, one of the selection balls just to see that up there. And um, I know we were all, most of us, uh, we set up like a big Zoom call for any of the girls that were able to join in because I know at different points all over the world, like it was the middle of the night, it was in the afternoon and everyone was like kind of all over the place. But um, it was really nice to share that with whoever any of the girls could join in on that and get everyone's reactions together. And um, it was just a really cool experience to be able to to see that in real time. And like Serena said, just make everything that much more real. So now we know who we're playing and, and how to prepare. And it was just, you know, a once in a lifetime experience that only happens the first time once. And I'm so happy that we get to be a part of it. Yes, I'm really curious to hear what Coach Allen has to say about the draw for the Philippines. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a little bit surreal sometimes when you're there. Obviously, uh, Sadelf and myself and, and Belay and Jeff attended the draw. And, and sometimes you're pinching yourself a little bit when you're, you're surrounded by football royalty like we were. And then 
to go into the actual event of the draw. And, you know, I don't really love all that pomp and ceremony myself. Uh, that's not sort of me. I love just sort of chilling out and relaxing. But it's just such a wonderful event. And being surrounded by so many football greats, both across men's and women's football, is, is really one of those moments where you just pinch yourself. And to see our name and, and our country and up in lights, with the likes of Germany and France and and USA and and all the big countries of, of football up there on the screen and to see your flag and to see it come out of out of the pot is 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 always just a little bit surreal. So, you know, it's it's one of those moments that you really just have to appreciate the fact of of what a great achievement it is to even even just be there. And you know, we all want more. We all want we all want to win and we all want to progress and we all want to get further. But certainly it was one of those moments for me where you just sit back and, and you know, appreciate the moment and, and enjoy the moment of, of having, you know, your country up there on the big stage. Yeah, for sure. I remember the the, the, the time when you qualified and I spoke to all of you and you were like, wow, it was like exhilaration. And then, and then a second exhilaration to be seeing, to be actually seeing your country's name in the World Cup draw is like, uh, historical for us, of course, and thanks for leading the squad to this, Coach Allen. So, but then later on, you guys quickly settled down and you said you're not just there to participate, but you want to compete and you want to win. You're definitely showing that grit of the team. You won the AFF Cup in incredible fashion and working so hard. So let's talk about a little bit of the teams a little bit. So your first game is against Switzerland. Ranked 21st in the world. They've been in two World Cups. Their best finish was in round of 16 in 2015. Um, what, what, what do you know about the, their, their current team, Coach Allen? Yeah, look, I, I played against them in 2015 in, in a friendly game a week before the World Cup. And some of the key players that they had back then are still in the team. Um, there's a young lady, Tsuna Gorjevic, who's who's been playing across all the top clubs of Europe over the mm -hmm. past few years and then you know probably their key and most important player is is Ramona Backman um I believe she's at PSG at the moment but she's she's really the one who 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 really you know catapults that team in in key moments and, and scores key goals for them and and is that x-factor player for them and, and really is a world-class player so you know they've got a good team they've got a solid team they also had to go through a European playoff uh, to get to this point. Uh, mm. But no doubt a lot of their players are playing across the Bundesliga, uh, top flight back home in Switzerland, and some are playing across the top leagues in Europe as well. So, you know, any European team, I think it's fair to say that Europe is now the strongest continent for women's football. And to have two teams from Europe certainly means that, that there's going to be a tough challenge ahead of us. Yeah, for sure. Well, Tane, you played in Iceland a lot. So, what do you? What can you? What are your thoughts on the Swiss team, on your first game? Um, I mean, like Alan said, uh, European football over the past, you know, handful of years has um, really closed the gap and and kind of taken over. Um, I feel like a lot of the progression of women's football as a whole and as a whole continent. Um, it's been a while since I've played in Iceland, but I do know, you know, the mentality over there is, you know, football is football is life. It's passion. It's, you know, it's a becoming much more lucrative to be a women's professional footballer over there and make a living out of it. And so, you know, their lives are surrounded by it. They, they get it all day, every day. And so um, I know the caliber is going to be very difficult um, no matter what European side you get. So um, we're just going to do our best to be as prepared as we can. Yeah. Now I want to ask Serena about the second game against New Zealand, the host. You're going to be playing in a stadium that seats 40,000 against the, against the host country. Uh, who is ranked 22nd in the world. They've been in six World Cups, right? Um, what do you, th what, can you imagine the atmosphere, what, the, what that's going to be like playing against New Zealand on the second game? I mean, I can imagine it, but I can't really imagine it. Um, you know, the closest thing that we've had so far 
um, and myself is the Vietnam game where we played mm -hmm. 8,000, 9,000 people max, I think. Um, and so just times that by a thousand, then it's just going to be like just a lot, but um, I can imagine it's going to be a great game and I'm really grateful and happy that we were able to play them, um, you know, back in California for our friendly to really assess like where we are um, with a team that, you know, is ranked um, where they are and, you know, the experience that they have and just to see that we can't compete against them. You know, we got, you know, we got a goal against them. Um, unfortunately, they were to come back and get two goals against us, but I think it still showed that we're very much in the hunt, in the fight, and it's not just going to be like, you know, a game where they're going to stomp all over us. So I think I'm just super excited and really ready to be tested in the World Cup against a team like New Zealand. Um, and, you know, we'll see. We'll just see what happens. But it's it's going to be crazy with 30 plus uh, thousand people that are rooting against us. But uh, I think it should be should be a good game. Yeah, that's right. You did play them in September uh, and you lost 2-1, right, Coach Allen? So that shows that it's, you know, it's super close. So um, are you confident that maybe you can turn things around, be able to up the, the game of the girls, even if you're playing against them in their, in their hometown? Yeah, for sure. I think as Serena suggested, we, we played them in that friendly and that was a good guide to to where we're at and where they're at. Um, ultimately, it's a friendly, and everyone knows it's a friendly. There's a little bit more pressure uh, when you play in the World Cup, and and as Serena alluded, playing in front of thirty or forty thousand people at, down in Wellington, which is, you know, certainly one of the hotbeds of of New Zealand football. They have they have an A League team. I've I've played down there with with one of my teams before, and and really passionate and engaged fan group. Um, it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. It's going to be superb and, and, again, a little bit surreal to be playing in front of a full house um, and, and enjoy the environment of a full house coming to support, you know, a women's international football match. And, and to think that we're going to be a part of it is just that extra little bit special. But New Zealand are a team who, who for a long time now have been together, uh, been in many World Cups and Olympic Games and... And, and a team that's full of, of, of experience. And that's something that we're going to have to overcome. But again, using that friendly as a little bit of a marker, we're, we're certainly in the hunt. And come seven or eight months' time, we've got to ensure that we hit that line ready to go and, and give it everything we've got. And no doubt, I think we're going to be a, a really, really fierce competitor in that match. Yeah, I can imagine. That's going to be super exciting. I'm, and for, for sure, it's going to be like prime time on television. That's going to be like a game to watch and hoping the Philippines can pull off an upset. Tane, well, talking about uh, powerhouse teams, Norway is your, is your third team that you're playing against. Of course, they have an incredible history in the World Cup. They, they won it in 1995. They've been in nine World Cups and they have a long tradition of excellent football, Olympic champion, European champion. Tane, what... What what do you think that's going to be like playing against um, Norway on your third and final game? Well, hopefully by by our third game we'll have really settled in and you know be at be at the top of our game. Um, I think you know going into a match like that again, there's much less pressure on us, um, and so I think that can be to our advantage. Um, but I know if we are able to put our best foot forward and, you know, we've come together as a team at that point, um, you know, like we said, we're not going there just to play and, you know, just to experience it. We're going there to compete. We're going there to win. So um, I think if we can keep a lot of the focus on what we are doing and what we're trying to achieve, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a great game either way and what an experience for us to have to play um, such a top a top team in Europe. Yeah. Well, you know, um, your team, your team's greatest asset, as you've always said, is your heart and your desire. And that's really what has carried you through. I've heard Coach Allen say that a number of times. Uh, Serena, how, what can you say about the improvement or development of the team since 
you first qualified for the World Cup, then you won the AFF to where you are um, right now, seven months away, seven to eight months away from the World Cup? I feel like it's been a steady slash consistent progression. I feel like every time we kind of rejoin, you can kind of see like the level has been raised um, at trainings, at matches, um, no matter what the result is, I feel like that's our overall goal is just to be better than the last time we stepped on the field and you can feel it, you can see it. Um, but there's definitely lots more of improve, improvement um, moving forward, but um, we've grown a lot since, you know, qualifying for the World Cup. Um, and you can see it in the SEA Games, the bronze medal that we won, and then in the AFF, the champ first championship we, that we've ever won. Um, so there's just been steady progression in my opinion, and um, I think we'll continue to do that as we prepare for the World Cup. The coach Allen, the are you happy with the way the at the rate of progress? Of course, the, the AFF was fantastic. Then you played New Zealand. You had two games with Costa Rica, wow, well, a draw and um, and a loss. And now you're playing against Chile. How would you rate the the development of your team? Are you are you happy with the way it's going? I think these two will testify and say that I'm never really happy. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, look, it, it's more about just always seeing where you're at and always striving for that little bit more. And mm -hmm. we, we know how much we've ch achieved this year and how much we've progressed, um, but never settling for that. Always looking at ways to, to get better individually throughout the whole squad and, and coming together as a group and obviously adding up all those little pieces and, and making a greater whole. And, and you know, I think, I think the one thing that people have to appreciate uh, back home is is how much work we've done this year, um, not only on the field but off the field. Travelling across four or five different continents is is not easy. Um, anyone who's been on a holiday and had to travel around the globe and, and get over jet lag and travel fatigue um, knows how hard that can be. Well, we've done that five or six times now um, across the entire planet and and the girls just keep backing up, ready to, to work hard, ready to learn, ready to listen, ready to put their bodies on the line physically and mentally for for their country. So, you know, it's just been an amazing ride. Um, and, you know, it's been really impressive to see how we've come together as a group, overcoming all the challenges that we've had to. And, and you know, you know, we come to the end of the year now, we've we're coming up to December and, and to reflect on the 12 months has, has been, you know, just such a joyous and amazing feeling and, and reflection to know that, that we've achieved what we have. But as we are, we're human beings. We want to strive for more. We want to achieve more. Uh, we're elite sports people and, and we just want to get to, you know, as, as high a position as we can leading into the World Cup and show the world that, that the Philippines can play football too. Yeah, so you have the two games against Chile coming up November 12 and November 15. Coach, uh, what, does the, what does the December look like for the women's squad? Is everyone going to be going back, taking a little break? I know Serena probably going back to her Japan team. Um, what is the schedule for the team for the rest of the year? Yeah, everyone's in a little bit different position. Depends on what league they're playing in. So we have some players in Europe. We have um a couple in australia now um and we also have a few um in america as well as you know a really cool group back in the philippines as well so everyone's at a different stage of tournaments and competition schedules in their individual clubs as a group we will more than likely um have a camp in australia in december um and get together oh. one last one last time this year um that's still to be confirmed but possibly we'll get together for another week uh, there. Before Christmas? And, yeah, just before Christmas. And then it's very important that, you know, we have a little bit of rest and recovery and, and give everyone a time to recharge their batteries. As I said, it's been an amazing year. I, I don't know any national team in my lifetime that's played 30 matches in a year, which, which we will have by that time. So, you know, it's really exhaustive um, and, and draining. Um, and, and it's really important that we use that that January period to to recharge and, and refresh and, and come back even stronger for next year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember that grueling 
schedule you had for the AFF, the schedule of games was like every other day, I think, which I know people were saying doesn't really happen that often. So it's great that you're going to be able to get together in December. Now, um, well, you've prepared for several World World Cups, Coach Allen. What what is what is going to be the the activity of the team from January to July? Can you give us like a a general overview of what it's going to be like? I'm sure you you've more or less planned it out. Yeah, look, like I said, January will probably be a period where where there's a lot of rest and recovery, and then no doubt after that we'll be using up all the FIFA windows. Uh, like we have this year, uh, challenging ourselves against countries that will help us prepare against the opponents that we have to play. Um, so we'll obviously be targeting a lot of European teams um, and and even New Zealand to a certain extent, even though they're possibly a little bit more direct and physical, still have a, a large European influence as well. So trying to play against teams that will help us in those three matches it, you know, as I said to the team the other day, we're not going into a league system where you play 28 or 38 matches in a season. You, you play three matches in a World Cup and, and you have to really ensure that you hit the ground running. So, you know, that's imperative for us come come July. So, you know, we're going to get together a lot. And on top of that, we've got another C Games next year. So it's also very exciting to have that just a couple of months out from the World Cup and that extra little motivation of a, of a tournament, a regional tournament to look forward to. Oh, yes. I forgot about the Southeast Asian Games. So it's going to be uh, the World Cup team playing in the in the in Cambodia in May. The only, the only issue with the Sea Games is that it's in a non FIFA window. So any player who's in a professional club, which is a which is a growing list in our team, um, thankfully, and that's great that we have more and more players who are now playing professionally, I, I think. From memory, when we were in India, we only had three players out of the 23 who, who were in professional clubs, and now we're up to seven or eight. And I'm anticipating by by the time we get to May, that'll be close anywhere from 10 to 15 players who will be in professional clubs. So it just shows how quickly this team is evolving and progressing you know, off the field as well to ensure that they're all playing week in, week out at, at a really high level. So Sea Games will be exciting, but it also will be a massive challenge in terms of who'll be available for that tournament. That's right. So uh, how are uh, girls, how is the team spirit? I mean, when you're like in your own individual countries, are you communicating with each other a lot in a in a chat group, I suppose? Yeah, we definitely keep in touch um, when we can, but it's hard, like uh, T was kind of alluding to. Um, we are all in different time zones, and talking to each other is kind of hard because someone could be asleep while someone just woke up, or someone has training while someone just finished training. So um, we do the best that we can. But yeah, we have our you know little group chat where we you know say silly things and just kind of keep in touch with everyone. So we definitely have that. So to advance um, further than the group stage, uh, you have to win. Well, at at best, I mean, to be sure to qualify, you have to win at least two games. And you can, you still have a chance if you win one and draw one. Is that correct, Coach? Yeah, that's correct. But, you know, we've set our own internal goals. But, you know, it's almost looking a little bit too far. You know, all, all I'm really looking at when I go into tournament is just game one. All my energy will be going into planning and preparing for Switzerland, uh, looking too far beyond that is sometimes a little bit of wasted energy and, and wasted, you know, thoughts that you can have. It's, it's hard enough preparing for and winning one match, let alone thinking about winning six or seven matches to win a World Cup. So we really just have to focus on game one. And you know, so many times in our lives, you would have heard the cliche of sports people, you know, I'm just worried about the next match. I'm just worried about the next match. And, and really, we have that cliche because it's important you don't waste energy. And for me, I'm just focused on Switzerland now, um, ensuring we do everything right leading up to that moment. And then once that game's over, we'll, we'll start focusing on the second game. Yes. And um, Tani, you know, since, um, since uh, qualifying for the World Cup and winning the AFF, what would you say has been the biggest um, impact and change, good change in your life? In my life personally? Yes. <laughs> okay. Aside um, from being star here. <laughs> uh, I think for me, it's just 
having football in my life um, as kind of the the top tier, as the top priority. It's been it's been a bit for me. Um, so this past year of being with the team so much has really been has really been great for me. Um, as you know, I, it is later on in my career. So to be able to have something like this so late in my career to prepare for, to look forward to, to be a part of, um, is just really exciting for me. And I'm, I'm so grateful that, you know, I've been able to continue to play and continue to play at such a high level. Um, not everyone gets to do that in their playing career. So I'm just really thankful and grateful for that. Yes. And Serena, what would you like to tell your Filipino fans who are watching you, following you and support you, I'm sure all the way till, till the World Cup? You know, as always, just a big, big thank you. Like it really means so much to the players, the staff, um, all of us here, um, the PFF, the national team. Just thank you so much for your continued support and just believing in us. Um, and I just hope that you continue to support us and, you know, keep talking to people about, you know, the Philippine women's national team and, you know, tweeting, Instagram, all of it. Like we're going to need every single person for this journey leading up to it. And, you know, especially being at the World Cup. Um, so thank you and just, you know, continue to support us. And we really, really, really do appreciate it um, from the bottom of our hearts. So thank you. Yeah. And coach? Uh, looking forward to the next two games against Chile. What would you like to say to the Filipino fans? Uh, look, just always, like usual, keep supporting our team. Um, the more we can grow that supporter base, the more the game can grow um, back home. So, you know, we want to see more kids running around playing football and enjoying the game that, that we love. Um, you know, it's such a, great, such a great sport and such a great vehicle for for change and growth and development of, of a person. So, you know, I've, I come from a country uh, where football's not number one. And, you know, we're going to two World Cup hosts where football's not number one and, and same in the Philippines where football's not number one. So, you know, we share a lot of, in common with the two World Cup hosts. And, you know, our job is really to make sure that young boys and young girls really enjoy the sport and have some heroes to look up to. And, you know, I know that we've given them some heroes now. So I'm hoping that the game grows and in leaps and bounds back home in the Philippines. Well, in behalf of Play It Right TV, thank you so much for just continuing to be so dedicated. You know, I know the travel, the training, the tournaments. It's just, I know that so much uh, goes on and so much has to be done to do what you guys do to, to all of the team. Thank you. And to everyone in the back staff who has to do a lot of outside work like Sedel. Uh, thank you so much. And of course, team manager Jeff, right, who, who makes it all happen. Um, thank you so much. And we are super supporting you and believing in you and uh, just one with you in, in your faith in the Filipinas. So mabuhay and keep going. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. Thanks. We'll see you again next time, Filipinas. God bless. All right. Well, we hope that you enjoyed our chat with the Filipinas, our women's national football team. They have very important training games coming up against Chile, November 12 and November 15. They're working hard, so let's keep them in our prayers. And thank you for believing in them. Good luck, Filipinas. Go, 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 Philippines. All right, we hope you enjoyed that episode. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe to Play It Right TV. And please visit also our sister company, playitright.com. They have wonderful sports products, fitness products, wonderful Christmas gifts. They always have special prices and promos. Come and visit their site, playitright.com. Thank you so much again. Until the next episode, in behalf of Kenito Hanson, this is Diane Castillo. See you next time, Vitos at Play It Right TV.